This week, I want to rant about something that's been rattling around in my head, and I just need to give voice to it. Because I go on TikTok and YouTube and Twitter and Twitch and far too many platforms every day and talk about trying to make things better. About trying to build a better world. And you would be amazed how angry that makes some people. I'm not a partisan. I have no interest in any particular party. I think they all kind of suck. I just want to make the world a better place, and I want to educate people about the issues in order to help them understand them. I'm a teacher. That's my skill set. And I genuinely believe that making this content helps. That's why I do it. But there are two quotations that I just can't stop thinking about, because when I talk about the issues, I get a lot of defeatist thinking commented back to me, suggesting that that's just sort of the way the world is. We should just accept things as they are. Make the best of it. You know, welcome to life. Welcome to adulthood. Life's tough. Get a helmet. You know the whole stuff. So the first quotation that I want to share with you is from David Graeber. I recently read his book, Bullshit Jobs, and it's fantastic. Highly recommend. But he said, quote, every day we wake up and collectively make up world together. But which one of us, left to our own devices, would ever decide they wanted to make a world like this one? And I think that's a really important question. The systems in the world that we live in were all made by people. They're all maintained by people. And they could all be stopped by people. Which brings me to the other quotation that I can't stop thinking about. It's from Ursula Le Guin, a legendary writer who I think everybody should read. And I'll let her say it for herself, because it's amazing. Let's go to the clip. We live in capitalism. Its power seems inescapable. So did the divine right of kings. <laughs> and this is really what I want to talk about. I'm not a revolutionary, at least I'm not sure I am. I'm sure leftists will argue about revolution in the comments. It's one of the things they love to do. That and arguing about definitions of communism and socialism. They lost that. It's like sugar to them. They'll do that all day. But I want you to think about the leadership that we have in Canada right now and ask you if they are genuinely trying to imagine a better world. Tommy Douglas looked at a world with private health care and imagined something different. He imagined a country that took better care of its people, that worked together to meet a collective need without lining the pockets of the wealthy. When will Canada have leadership with vision? When did we stop having big ideas? Like, full credit to Jagmeet Singh for trying to push a national dental care and national pharmacare program, and while they did get something across the line, it's limited. Insulin and birth control, and dental care for young people, people with low incomes, and seniors. And yes, these programs are planned to expand, and yes, they're a good thing, but they're still limited. And they're still running through private industry, through private insurance. There's always a pocket to be lined, because of course there is. We used to be a country that had real vision when it came to public services. Petro Canada, Air Canada, and CN all used to be nationalized. Why couldn't they be again? Those companies make millions, and in some cases, billions of dollars in profits. Those could be going back into the Canadian economy rather than into the pockets of the people on the yachts. They could be going to pay for social services, education, healthcare, more. They could be used to hold down prices or to improve the quality of service. But instead, we want to make sure that the rich get richer. And so we wake up every day and perpetuate that system. Ask yourself, what are you doing to stand against it? What are you doing to break up your own internalized biases and expectations? Now, I don't mean that means you should suddenly take to the woods and put on a beret. Now, if that's who you are, go ahead. But th for the rest of us, there are a lot of different things you can do. You don't even have to buy a beret. What I'm proposing is pretty simple and something I'm working on myself. And I'm not going to claim that I'm perfect, but I think it's important. It's about trying to imagine something better. Instead of just accepting things how they are, think about how they could be better. And not just for you. Imagine somebody who is very vulnerable. Someone who is already extremely hurt by the system for a bunch of different reasons. How can we make things better in the world for them? But even on a personal level, there's actions you can take. Maybe it's something as simple as changing the way that you treat people in your life. Changing the way you participate in your community. Shoveling your neighbor's walk. I don't know. It's August, but it's coming. You could shovel their walk instead of contacting a bylaw officer to send them a pissy note. Looking at you, neighbor. I had 24 hours, damn it. Don't worry, they don't watch us. Even if they do. Yeah. But the systems that break us down thrive on our apathy. The systems that we live in were built by people. They can be torn down by people. Maybe that means revolution. Maybe that's something as simple as joining a community organization. I'll leave that up to you. Just do something. Or don't. I'm not your dad.